Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, where you can create your own website or online store. The cost of going to college may be at an all-time high, but so is its enormous value. For many students, going to college is hardly a choice, putting them on a collision course with the College Board, the company that rules education. If you've ever taken the SAT, PSAT, or an AP class, the College Board has cashed your check, and they do it as a tax-exempt non-profit organization, despite making millions in profit every year. We'd love to think the college applications we work so hard on are carefully reviewed in detail, but that's just not the case. Colleges can get 70, 80,000 applications a year, so it's just not practical to spend more than a few minutes on each one. And that's if you're lucky. Many schools automate the admissions process with algorithms that sort applications into bins before anyone ever reads them. And to do this, they need objective numeric values to input, and the SAT offers exactly that. Let's just hope they're nothing like the YouTube algorithms. Another benefit of the SAT has to do with grade inflation. Colleges need to know that an A at one school has the same value at another, which is a much bigger problem than you might think. Here's a graph of grades over time, and it's not at all what you'd expect. GPA is rising incredibly quickly. The most common grade in high school and college is now an A. Whether you think an A should mean the top 20% of a class, or simply however many students perform at that level, this is a big problem. There's no nationwide newsletter telling teachers what last year's 90% is worth today. Every school inflates grades differently, and some not at all. If you compare this grade inflation between schools, you can see just just how much it varies between institutions. So when letter grades mean less and less, the SAT means more than ever. The College Board tests need to be exceptions, more objective measures of performance. They aren't curved based on how well everyone else does, but they do account for differences between tests. To make sure that a score in January of this year is equivalent to that same score in, say, October of 2013, they adjust scores based on how much easier or harder any particular test is. So these tests really are useful, but make no mistake, they're designed that way for profit. If you've ever taken an AP test, the process is all too familiar. You pay the College Board an absurd amount of money for the privilege of sitting in a cold room for three hours, and then anxiously await your score. After months of waiting, and all the hours you spent studying, you're gifted with a single digit. No feedback, no justification. One single digit. And if you actually want to send your score to colleges, which is the point of taking the test, you'll need to pay an additional fee. But who can blame them? It's probably very costly to send a one-digit number between computers. As frustrating as as this is, the College Board is far from the only obnoxious company used by schools. There's MyMathLab, PowerSchool, Chromebooks, LandSchool, Moodle, Blackboard, WebAssign, Wiley+, Alex, WebWork, and many, many more. All these seem designed to irritate, yet they're in almost every school. There's only one way to make sense of this. These companies really have one customer. Not actually students, but schools. The College Board is so popular not because they make a good, reasonably priced product, but because they provide what colleges want, so students have no choice. Schools buy what saves them time or ticks legal boxes, so that's who these companies design for. Everything else, like how they actually work for students, is pretty much irrelevant. According to their mission statement, the College Board is a mission-driven, not-for-profit organization that connects students to college success and opportunity. The problem is, it acts a lot more like a business with a monopoly than a generous service for students. The College Board president makes over $750,000 a year, and their average salary for executives is upwards of $300,000. Now, there's nothing wrong with trying to retain important employees or even rewarding their success, but the College Board pretends to exist for the benefit of students while charging them unnecessarily high prices. They'll sell you a practice book for the PSAT, which is itself practice for the SAT, and and then charge you a fee to use your score. If their website goes down, and it often does when scores are released, no problem, you can hear your score over the phone for just $15 extra. Even after squeezing every penny they can from students, they turn around and sell our personal information to recruiters and colleges. It's true that students can take the ACT instead of the SAT and IB instead of AP, but that's a lot like saying Comcast isn't a problem because there are other internet providers. Even when students do have the option of taking the 
ACT or SAT at their school, both charged the same ridiculous prices. Both companies would rather respect the other's territory than compete and be forced to lower profits. The SAT rules the coasts and the ACT in between. College Board's own AP Microeconomics curriculum explains, quote, it's important to emphasize that monopolies can cause market failures when they use their market power to engage in behavior that restrains competition. But I'm afraid no emphasis is necessary. AP students learn this concept all too well when they go to pay for their tests. Thanks, College Board. A lot of people ask me about getting started on YouTube. Whatever your idea, on or off YouTube, my advice is to start with something you can do today. If the idea is interesting enough to intrigue you, it probably can't be done in a day, so you'll either put it off or start and quickly get discouraged. But if you get a feeling of accomplishment early on, you're way more likely to mentally invest in the project long term. This is where Squarespace can help. You can make a website with a nice custom domain and even an online store in minutes, not hours or days. It builds that momentum to keep working on your project. Squarespace turns what would otherwise be a whole other project into a single easy step of your bigger goal. I like how easy it is to use, but even more than that, how much control you have over the design. It never looks like you're just editing a template, but it is that easy. So to turn your idea into a real living project, go to squarespace.com slash polymatter. That's P-O-L-Y-M-A-T-T-E-R. You'll get 10% off your first website or domain and help support this channel in the process. Thanks again to Squarespace. But how did College Board get so big in the first place? Watch the new video from my friends at Business Casual to find out.